Although it had been widely discussed, there are reports this morning that the White House and staff for Biden's reelection campaign were blindsided when he dropped the bomb, they said, with his decision to withdraw from the race. The Daily Mail reports that most found out the way we all found out through a tweet that was posted online. One campaign staffer told the Daily Mail, quote, no one had a heads up before the tweet posted, which to me is an insane way to treat the 1,300 people that work for you on the campaign. So was it the latest poll showing Biden had no path to victory or health concerns that led to this decision now? With a closer look at the latest polling numbers, let's talk to the host of the Scott Rasmussen Show, president of RMG Research, pollster and analyst, Scott Rasmussen. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Jan. First, when it comes to these approval ratings, VP Harris had always polled even lower than Joe Biden himself. But how is she doing in the polls when it comes to a possible matchup for the White House against Trump? Well, from the very beginning, uh, Vice President Harris has had some pretty weak polling numbers and in head-to-head -head matchups against Donald Trump. She's trailing both nationally and in the key swing states. Um, and to be to be fair to her, this is a very difficult position to be thrown into. I would caution everybody, though, that, uh, you know, there's a difference in asking a polling question about a theoretical run by Kamala Harris when Joe Biden is still in the race. Um, and the numbers we'll start to see this week. So I would expect she'll still be behind, but uh, but let's give it a couple of days to find out in this new dynamic. Also, Scott, considering how this has played out with her not being elected to the Democratic ticket, but instead, you know, endorsed by the candidate who did win and then dropped out, how does this impact the race? Look, I think the entire play is if it was if it was a sports event, we'd say it's a Hail Mary pass. Uh, Democrats think it's kind of a long shot for this to work, but you still have to try. Um, and on top of that, it's not just the White House. Democrats are very concerned about having a, an effective campaign, a well-funded campaign to maybe hang on to a couple of competitive Senate seats and hope possibly to hang on to the, or pick up the House of Representatives. Yeah, and there's also been this criticism that she might be unqualified to be president. Some asking, what has she done? What would her campaign strategy be? What, what are voters saying right now? You know, we don't have good information on what voters are saying right now. What we do know is her historic record. Um, there are concerns. Uh, actually, somebody mentioned in the segment a moment ago, she was the border czar, and that's become a really big problem for the Democratic Party. Uh, Kamala Harris is a progressive Democrat. Her views are far to the left of everyday Americans. Uh, she has a focus on things that are, I mean, she went to Florida after a, a hurricane and talked about we're going to give out money to communities of color first in the name of equity. Things like that are going to be very difficult to overcome. On the other hand, most people really don't know all that much about Vice President Harris. In the next couple of weeks, she will introduce herself in a new way. And we'll see if that moderates the image at all. And the big question, will Democrats rally behind her as well as some of the party's top donors? Um, yes and no. There will certainly be some holdouts. There will be some people who are um, having second thoughts. I think most of that anger, though, will be directed towards the current president. Um, I would expect that both during the campaign and after Election Day, there will be a lot of Democratic resentment at the fact that the Biden team ran this race in the first place and then hung on so long. I mean, look, after that June 27th debate, uh, Joe Biden made the story about him. The entire Democratic strategy was to keep the focus on Donald Trump. That strategy is, is gone. What about the possibility, Scott, of independent Joe Manchin joining the race and changing his affiliation back to the Democratic Party? You know, we're hearing that he did speak with some Democratic donors uh, over the weekend, but, but how would this play out? Joe Manchin would probably be popular among some segments of the Democratic base. You know, if you picture the uh, the Democratic Party is having two wings, Kamala Harris would represent the progressive wing, and Joe Manchin, the more centrist, traditional wing of the Democratic Party. But it's not really going to be about the voters. Even if this goes to a contested convention, the delegates, the party activists, tend to be much more progressive than the party's voters. So it's, it's hard to imagine a successful challenge from Joe Manchin. But any kind of a challenge would make uh, Harris's 
uh, campaign going forward even more difficult. And at this point, how are we looking when it comes to the Senate and House races? Which party is likely to control Congress? Uh, Republicans are almost certain to control the Senate. You know, they are going to pick up Manchin's seat in West Virginia. If Trump is elected, that's enough to win control of the Senate. There are also some other seats that are in play. John Tester's seat uh, in Montana most is the one that the Democrats are most likely to lose. So the GOP very should feel very good about winning the Senate this time around. The House, much more in play. Um, you know, that will be tied to how well the Trump-Harris campaign works out nationally. If Harris can whip up some enthusiasm from the Democratic base and narrow the margin uh, with Trump, there's at least an outside possibility Democrats could get the House. But again, right now, the, the odds would be against it. Host of the Scott Rasmussen Show. Scott Rasmussen, always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Thanks for joining us Thank this you, morning. Yeah.